OpenAI has come up with a new leveling system to help us understand how close to human-level AI we actually are. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, our main episode focuses on two stories coming out of OpenAI. They are very different, but both are really big and fascinating in their own ways. We kick off with a new report, a scoop from Bloomberg, really, that OpenAI has developed a new system to explain where we are in progressing towards AI that achieves artificial general intelligence, or AGI. It is, of course, the expressed mandate and purpose of OpenAI to produce safe and beneficial AGI for all. But this is new territory, and so benchmarking where we are against it theoretically seems like a pretty useful thing. Ever since the crisis last fall with Sam Altman being fired and then rehired, and more recently with Ilya leaving the company alongside basically the entire super alignment team, it's been kind of a wait and see on how OpenAI would talk again about its approach to long-term AI alignment and AI safety. This new leveling system certainly isn't a comprehensive approach to that, but does give a little bit more insight into how the company sees risks at various stages. The new system has five levels and was introduced at an all-hands meeting on Tuesday of this week. It was confirmed by an OpenAI spokesperson. So what are these five levels? According to OpenAI, the stages of artificial intelligence start where we are now at level one with chatbots. These are AIs that can use conversational language. Of course, we are all living in the post-ChatGPT world, but fundamentally what OpenAI is saying with these levels is that for almost two years now, this is the level that we've been at, level one. Presumably then, level one does not represent some big risks. There isn't really anyone out there saying that this sort of GPT-4.0, Claude 3.5 type of capacity is a real risk. But what comes next? The level two stage on OpenAI's system is called reasoners with human level problem solving. According to Bloomberg, at the meeting where they introduced this leveling system, execs at the company told employees that they believed that while we were on the first level, we were on the cusp of reaching the second. Adding a little bit more color, Bloomberg writes, this refers to systems that can do basic problem-solving tasks as well as a human with a doctorate-level education who doesn't have access to any tools. To point out how this version would differ, Bloomberg writes, Company leadership gave a demonstration of a research project involving its GPT-4 AI model that OpenAI thinks shows some skills that rise to human-like reasoning. This part was not confirmed by the OpenAI spokesperson, who simply said that they are, quote, always testing new capabilities internally. Now, you may note that level two is not the thing that everyone has been excited about for more than a year, which is agents. That comes at level three. The level three stage is agents or systems that can take actions. At level four, we have innovators. AI that can aid in invention, and at level five, organizations, AI that can do the work of an entire organization. A couple more caveats. This is not necessarily a final determination. This was created by a set of OpenAI executives and is meant to be a work in progress. Second, it doesn't appear at least that we've seen any sort of discussion around how long OpenAI believes it will take to get to each of these different stages. I will note that I did see on Twitter today someone who claimed that they had sources in their DMs saying that they had actually interacted with GPT-5, although that tweet came down later, so make of that what you will. If you head on over to Metaculus, which is an interesting place to get a crowdsourced sense of when people who are pretty well informed think different milestones will be hit within AI, the current betting among 652 forecasters around when OpenAI will announce GPT-5 is January 13th of next year, 2025. I will also say that while we've only started to see conversation around this system hitting X slash Twitter, people aren't necessarily totally convinced, or at least they don't feel like they have enough information to really understand. Mario Canistra writes, strange list. It seems to me that as soon as you get to level two, you also get three, four, and five. Unless there is a weird definition of human level, humans can do all these things, so human level AI should be able to do all those things. Others like Matt Garcia points out that level five organizations kind of sounds like advanced super intelligence. Pseudonym writes, this would be a better way to structure an at-home agent flow. And Steph writes, once you reach level two, level three should be a piece of cake. I'm probably wrong, but just by making AI have access to APIs, it should become an agent if it can already plan things. I will be interested to see whether anyone else picks up this discussion over the next couple weeks, or whether this will mostly remain on the drawing board. Second OpenAI story, one that has much more to do with the state of U.S. policy in AI, Microsoft and Apple are both getting rid of their OpenAI board observer roles. So first, a little bit of background. Microsoft has obviously had a long-standing relationship with OpenAI, but it wasn't until after the debacle last November that it took a formal board observer role. More recently, really just a week ago, we learned that Apple would be getting an equivalent board observer role, 
as part of its deal to put ChatGPT onto the iPhone. Now, however, it appears that antitrust concerns have made those big tech companies rethink that relationship. The reality is that we have very little information around what drove this. Presumably, it has to do with antitrust scrutiny, which has been on the rise in general, writes Martin Peers at The Information. Given that Microsoft's board observer role seems to have intensified regulatory scrutiny of its open AI relationship, both in Europe and in the US, it's possible Microsoft and Apple decided the positions weren't worth the hassle. OpenAI can update both companies on whatever is necessary in private meetings as it indicated it would do going forward. So here, basically, Martin is arguing that a board observer role is exactly that. It's an observer role. It doesn't have any power to actually shape or influence things or be a part of any sort of voting. And so to the extent that that role is just about visibility and insight, but it increases regulatory pressure, well, just figure out some way that isn't enshrined as a board observer to do the same sort of information sharing. Pierce does also note that given the European Commission's antitrust leader had said that her team had concluded that Microsoft hadn't acquired control of OpenAI after getting this board observer role, it, quote, implies that if regulators triggered this shakeup, it was either the FTC in the U.S. or the Competition and Markets Authority in the U.K. While the regulatory discourse around AI has certainly slowed down in the U.S. this year, the antitrust conversation has done nothing but heat up. For now, though, that is going to do it for this quick episode today. Appreciate you listening as always, and until next time, peace.